Hey there. Hi, it's uh, Nancy, the nurse practitioner. I'm here because I would like to speak with you today on April 5th, 2020. Um, it happens to be my birthday, but actually right now, birthdays don't matter, do they? It really matters that we all know what we need to do to prevent the spread of this COVID-19 virus. And so on my birthday, I'll have some special requests from you. But the main thing right now is to go through some stuff that we have to do in our own homes. And uh, this information is from the CDC. And some of it is just from good old common sense and experience from being in the home and using good hygiene. Um, forgive me for reading some of this. It took me all day to write this up to put protocols together that I thought would help us in the home. And so I'm going to basically read it to you and then it'll be available in downloadable format on my facebook.com caregiver success site and also on my YouTube channel for downloading as well as some other handouts that I will go over with you. So let's just start uh, learning about some things we can do at, for home hygiene for both the family member and the aide during the COVID-19 situation that we're in, which is actually a crisis as we all know it. So we are all in a different place right now. Um, remember like two to three weeks ago um, that we were not allowed to shake hands. We were elbow bumping and whatnot. Well, that has gone away, but now we're uh, up to a day ago, it has been recommended that most of us wear face masks. And the reason basically for that was so that we would not touch our face or our eyes or our nose. Um, and this way we could reduce uh, the chance of the spread of the COVID-19 from the droplet transmission. Uh, and um, we just have to assume that everyone right now has the COVID-19 virus. We have to assume that because many people are not symptomatic and they could be carriers. And we'll talk more about the face masks below, but I just want to go over some things here. So each of us has a responsibility to do what we can to prevent even one person from coming down with COVID-19 because that one person that we could come across uh, and we're feeling fine could actually cause them to be very sick, seriously ill, and maybe even die. So you, you can be empowered by knowing the risks and what you can do as both a caregiver, an aide, or even a family member also um, how to prevent the spread of this uh, virus in your own home. And remember, this is not a time to be insulted or to feel that you're, you're immune or you're allowed to feel this way. Um, and that you are also not immune about anything out there. Everyone now is known to be at risk. Anyone can get this disease. Uh, so with that said, let's go over what to do to keep the environment safe in your home for your aging parent and for you as well as any visitors. And uh, much of this uh, information also applies for families that all live together. We will probably do another video about that separately about if someone gets sick or how to keep your distance in your own family. So first you want to get organized if somebody's coming to the house. Um, let's say you have a mom, your mom in a separate bedroom. She's got a bathroom nearby that's hers and you're used to having aides coming and going um, all the time to take care of her. The first thing you want to have is have a hand sanitizer near the door. Um, you definitely want to have an oral thermometer that's there with a disposable sheath on it, a garbage bag near the door, or a, a, some kind of a disposable basket with a bag in it that you could put the uh, thermometer sheath in and a face mask at the end of the day. You also will need um, a designated place for them to put their shoes, and, and you need to keep a face mask near the door for the aid or the visitor when they arrive. The next thing is that you need to have a sign on the door, and this makes people stop when they get to your front door. I will show you the sign that I made, and basically it looks like this. It has a big letter STOP on it, and it reads, STOP, read below before entering. Please be honest when answering these questions below. We are trying to protect our aging parent or disabled or immunocompromised person who is highly susceptible to COVID-19. So, have you ever been exposed to anyone that you know has COVID-19? And if you have, has it been within the last 14 days from the time of the exposure? That means that you would need to be quarantined in your home for 14 days from that time. And if you have symptoms, then you need to start counting all over again for another 14 days. 
And I also wrote on here, see the CDC for further guidelines. So people can actually stop and look at their phone if they want to, because people are going to want to see grandma and they will not be allowed to see her if there is any sign of the following symptoms. So the other part of this is thank you for your understanding and we hope you take care of yourself. So if you are sick or you think you've been exposed, just quietly go home or talk to your sister on the phone and say thank you. Or you could even go to the window and see your mom through the window, but you can't go in. And know that you may be the difference between mom getting sick and dying. Um, I We have had a couple patients who actually found out that they got sick from their children their grown children who didn't know they were sick and then they actually did pass away. And that's very sad to hear. So do your part. So these are the following symptoms that you would be asked for an oral temperature of over 100.4 in the last 72 hours. Have you had any of these symptoms? Do you have a new cough? Do you have difficulty breathing? Signs or symptoms of the flu, which is muscle aches, chills, nausea, and vomiting, diarrhea for the last 72 hours headaches or runny nose. So all this could be right here on the, the door. And you've already said, be honest. So if the person's reading this and they have any of those symptoms, they should really turn around and go away. So just um, in a footnote, while we're at it, you know, fever may not be present in some people, people that are, are young, elderly, immunosuppressed, or taking certain medications. So you may not spike any kind of a, a temperature at all that's very high and you could actually be at risk. So you're gonna to have to use your judgment should you be using um, this guide for testing people. Uh, another thing to remember is that um, to keep your six foot distance when you do open the door to, to check the person out just because they need to have acknowledged that they've read the paper, that they agree before you even consider letting them near the front door and opening it, okay? I know it sounds weird, but this is what we have to do right now, and we're just trying to protect everybody. So this sign is going to be ready for you in PDF format. I'll have it on my Facebook page for you as well um, after the video or by tomorrow. Uh, and also because it's April, it's seasonal allergy time. I'm a sneezer. I'll sneeze 40 times <laughs> before I'm done, and my nose is running all the time, and I'm blowing it. I have itchy eyes. I take a nasal um, decongestant just to help me. Um, so these are symptoms that may seem like you have the flu or common cold, but if you get this every single spring and that's your system, then you um, know that this is what you probably have if you don't have other symptoms like body aches, etc. Okay, so you're going to now assess the person at the door. They've read the paper. They agree that they don't have any of the symptoms. And the next thing you're going to do is take their temperature. You're all organized. You have the thermometer ready. And you're going to have them take off their shoes and put them in a designated area. Um, put a squirt of hand sanitizer on their hands. And, um, and I will show you how to actually do that. Take a hand sanitizer that you have near the door. Give yourself a squirt. You're going to rub your hands together, front and back, front and back like this, in between your fingers. You can do your fingernails and make sure you look that the aide has cut her fingernails, that she doesn't have any gel nails, that they should really be cut. Actually, all of us should cut off her nails right now. And actually, as an aide, we should never have long fingernails. Excuse me for the noise in the kitchen. My husband's putting away dishes or something. <laughs> um, so I'm in my living room trying to get away from the noise. Uh, so sorry about that. Just here beyond that. So once your hands are completely dry, you're now sanitized. Um, I will also give you, a, you'll get a face mask at the door, and then you need to put that face mask on. Now, just to go over face masks for a minute, um, it's important that the face mask has is not used before, of course. This is a paper one that I had. The white side goes a, a to your face. There's usually a crimping part. Now that your hands are clean, you can put this on. Pull it under your chin, crimp it around your nose, and you have a nice good seal. Okay, so this is a surgical mask that is disposable. Uh, they're kind of hard to come by right now. Uh, I actually started making my own. This is one that I made. I had some material in, and I just took a batting material on one side, which will become the side to your face. Uh, I should have put the flower up and down, but I didn't want to waste my uh, 
fabric. And this one I actually took a twisty that I got from my, uh, my um, celery and my uh, lettuce. It's a long green strip that you know that's wiry. And I actually sewed a piece of it inside my um, mask like that. Okay, and then you just do that. All right. Uh, the other thing that you can use, and I know you're going to laugh, but I made one out of like some cur carpet, or not carpet, um, curtain material. Um, it's thick, but if you're worried about not being thick enough, I took a mini pad and I stuck it in there. I cut the mini pad, I cut off each corner, and I put them together like this. And you can actually then just put this around your ears like this. Excuse me, woman. I gotta tell my husband to make stop making noise. Be right back. I'm telling him he makes so much noise, but he doesn't even hear me. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let's keep going here. So that's how you put on masks. Um, you can also get very creative. I found this, which is like a do-rag thing. It's a tube. I actually found this. It's a hair thing that you wear for the beach. You can wear a dicky that you have. This could be folded in half. This could go over my nose like this. Very comfortable. I can breathe in it. It covers my mouth. It covers my nose. I can hear. People can hear me. The other important thing, I wear contact lenses, and it's also been recommended not to wear contact lenses because of the droplets that are in the air, and you also may touch your eyes, so I'm supposed to be wearing my glasses. So if you happen to have contacts, you may want to take out your prescription glasses and not use your contacts for a while. And of course, the other thing, let me take this thing off, the other thing you got to remember is that your glasses need to be clean too. So at the end of the day, you're going to wash them with soapy water and just, you know, rinse and dry them. Okay. You don't want to forget that they are covered with possible, um, debris or pathogens. So, um, the person has entered the room. The, the most important thing that the aide and the family member needs to remember that after putting on the mask, taking off their shoes, hand sanitizing, had the temperature taken, it's below 100.4, denies any of the symptoms, that they can stick around for a little while, but they need to keep their six foot distance at all times unless, unless the aide is doing personal care. Um, hand hygiene is important to be doing regularly and also respiratory hygiene. If they start to sneeze and you have your mask on, you can, it might be better just to leave the room and um, sneeze in your elbow and blow your nose and whatnot, wash your hands again, and then put the mask back on. But if you start sneezing or you're finding that you're coughing, it's better if you leave the room if you can. And think of the person's room as their space and the bathroom near them is also part of their space. So we're gonna try to talk about how you can delineate that in your home. Um, Proper donning of gloves. If the aide is going to do some personal care, she needs to know how to put gloves on. So I also had done a video on my YouTube channel, Caregiver Success, about how to wash your hands. And it's a 20 uh, second video, or that's how much time it takes to wash your hands properly. I plan on putting back on for you, uh, due to popular demand, <laughs> is this hand washing format, which is really good. You could post this in every bathroom, any place where there's a sink, even in the kitchen. And this way the purse people, anybody who comes in knows how to wash their hands. It's really great. It shows you proper techniques. So once your hands are clean uh, or if you're, they're sanitized and you're ready to put on gloves for any reason, you're going to need a pair of disposable gloves and they look like this. Okay. Um, when you're putting on gloves, your hands are clean. You're going to take them out of the box. And you're going to put one glove on and then you're going to put the other glove on okay we are going to go over a whole bunch of other things later but i just want to talk to you about that mask how to put it on and how to take off or, or uh, doff your gloves remove them and the thing is once they're soiled from using them changing a bed or whatever the way to take them off is you just like pinch the inside pull it together like this pinch it 
pull it off of your hand, curl it up in the other hand, take the corner of the other one and take it off and then you throw it away. It's important to have a receptacle in the person's bedroom so you're going to make her space all her own that you could throw away gloves, um, to, you know, wipes, um, briefs that are soiled, whatever, but that should be in, in mom or dad's bedroom so you can keep it away from everybody else. Once you throw these gloves out, you need to wash your hands again. So hand washing is massive. You're going to be doing a lot of that. So once you're thinking about mom's room, one of the things I'm noticing is less places that are touched, the better for the aid, which means doorknobs, handles, um, anything you could think of. So it may be a good idea right now to consider making a shelf, maybe in the closet, where there's no door on it, I'm just thinking, and all the items that you would need for mom are there. Briefs, wipes, um, gloves, uh, anything else you need. Undergarments, sheets to change the bed, chucks, all those things could be on the shelf where you're not opening drawers, turning knobs, opening closets, and, and we have no idea where you've been after you've been in that room with these gloves and working with mom all day, and then you're gonna leave. And it's much better for cleaning if we can kind of keep you in one area. So putting everything in one place where it's easy to get to would be great. Also a bathroom, there should be an area designated for you. There's the sink. Uh, put a clean towel that's designated for you because once your hands are washed, they're clean. So you just need a clean towel and that towel will be used by you for the rest of the day. And, and also pump soap nearby. Okay, pump soap is the best thing uh, to use and to use the 20 second wash. It'd be also good to have a hook or some kind of place to have a hanger in the room because we're gonna go over about an apron in a few minutes. And we talked about posting up the hand washing poster, so you're good to go with that. So there's mom's space. You know how to don the gloves, you know how to put on your mask, you know who can come in the house, and now you're ready to take care of mom. Okay, so uh, you also wanna make sure that you're thinking about preventing use of unnecessary equipment. You know, you want to uh, prevent use of too much toilet paper or paper goods. They're disposable, but a lot of things are washable. And don't forget, your years ago, I mean, I had kids that wore cloth diapers. Cloth diapers were were reusable over and over again. It's really also a great idea to consider getting chucks for the bed that are uh, the ones that you can get that are cotton. They are actually five in a pack. They're a little expensive, but once you buy them, you can wash them with bleach over and over again and use them on the bed. It saves a lot of money in the long run and it also is good for the environment and it's it's good for you for, for not spending money or trying to find things that don't exist out there right now, okay? Um, all right, so back for the caregiver, wearing scrubs. Okay, the caregiver should not be coming in street clothes. If you're gonna be taking care of somebody, get yourself a pair of scrubs. You can get them online. You could even get yourself a, a pair of clothes that are become your designated clothes, a nice pair of sweatpants that are comfortable or cotton pants and a button down the, sh the front t-shirt. It's better to it's buttoned down because you don't want to have to take it off at the end of the day and it may be a little soiled on the sleeves or whatever and you don't want anything near your face. So make sure you do that. Get one that's buttoned down the front. Okay. Um, an apron. This is really cool. You know, an apron that you have in the kitchen in your house could be designated for the aid. I got this really great apron. It says, you look radishing on it. <laughs> great apron. It looks like this. Now, see how it covers a lot of me here? You can have an apron when you're gonna be uh, giving a bath, when you're going to be um, changing somebody, when you're working with mom during the day, that's what you, when you could be using this apron. Um, and as long as you're in her room, you can wear the apron. Uh, and then you can remove it and hang it up in her room when you're leaving to go to another room, and then you put it back on when you're returning. And at the end of the day, this apron goes into a hamper along with any other items, the chucks, the bedding, um, the briefs, anything that can be washed will go back into this, the hand towel, 
into the hamper where it then can be with a plastic bag in it can be brought to the washing machine and just dumped right in and washed and used the next day with the use of bleach. Okay, and the apron is used when there's any chance of splashing and sprays of, of, an, of, of, of different um, soaps and whatnot and water. High contact with patients, uh, with the patient care activities, makes the idea, you know, the thought of the germs being transferred from your hands and clothing onto you. So when you're dressing them or bathing and showering, transferring, providing hygiene, like washing their face, washing their hair, wound care especially, any device care, such as Foley catheters or ostomies, changing any briefs or assisting with toiling. All those times you're going to need to be using an apron. And it's really great because it's something that can be washed. When you go home at the end of the day, you take this off and you throw it in that hamper, you know, you still have clothes that you don't have to worry so much about, but you still want to make sure it's buttoned down the front. It's easier to take off because you just... You're still going to be in their kitchen and making food, etc. So then at that point, you won't have an apron on. All right. So we talked about the face mask brief briefly. We talked about the use of glasses. Um, if you don't wear glasses or contacts, then you can always get goggles. They, you can get them in a Home Depot. You can buy them in a hardware store. The most important part about that, like I mentioned, is making sure you wipe them off at the end of the day. Um, if you're near the patient for any length of time, you're supposed to be wearing a face mask also in public. So once you came in the house, you got the face mask on, you don't have to worry about when you're washing them that you don't have one on, um, but try to maintain your six feet distance when you don't have to be that close. Um, okay, let me see what else we can say about that. The other thing is, is that um, the patient should wear a mask also if the patient's sick. You know, you're an aide, you're trying to take care of somebody, and this is the front lines, unfortunately, but you're trying to be protected from them as well. And if they're sick and they have a cold or cough, you need to put a face mask on them. Um, if, and if they have any of those symptoms, cold symptoms like we mentioned. But um, if you know the person has had limited exposure to anybody, you're the only one coming in and um, they've been properly isolated, they may also be confused and they may not want to keep or be able to keep the mask on. That may be a problem. So do the best you can to avoid um, anything. If you feel like anybody spewed anything from sneezing on you or you feel like they're going to sneeze, turn your back, walk away. You know, so the droplets fall and then you can come back. It's And you already have a mask and you already have goggles on, you already have an apron on. So you're in good shape as long as you take them off and you're careful to, to dispose of them properly. Okay, uh, we talked about the, the contact lenses, food preparation. So now you want to go in the kitchen and make mom something to eat. Um, you're going to take off that apron that you've had in the room because it may have stuff on it from soiling from outside. Take off the apron, hang it up on the hook in the patient's room. You wash your hands for 20 seconds as we've gone over. And that's always before handling food or anything else that has any soiling going on. And you're gonna to wanna to wash your hands before you put on gloves ever, anytime. Because gloves are not the replacement of washing your hands. Uh, okay, try to your best not to touch doorknobs or handles. Use your elbow if you can. Leave the door in the bathroom open. You do have your own sink. You have your own area there, and that's the area that will be taken care of when you leave to be cleaned off. So try to keep your areas of exposure as a caregiver or an aide limited um, so there's less chance of spreading anything. As you're making the food, um, make sure it's simple. Maybe the daughter or the son could make a small stew or something and they're in containers. You could heat them up, put them on a plate and bring them in to the room. As soon as you're done feeding mom or having her eat, you're gonna take those plates and dishes and put them right in the dishwasher because the heat and the hot water will uh, get rid of everything there. You can serve the food in the patient's room if the patient has limited mobility or in the kitchen. Um, if they can wheel out in a wheelchair, it's nice to get them out. You know, they don't want to be a prisoner in their room forever, and that's not really fair. But 
as long as they're clean and they're up to the table, you can wipe the table down um, with a little bit of um, hot soapy water, uh, let it dry, put a nice placemat down, and let mom have a nice meal with you there at the table, okay? Um, if somebody wants to eat at the table with them just to keep them company, you can be far enough on the other end of the table, take your mask off um, or leave one half hanging, eat the meal, put your dishes in the dishwasher, put your mask back on. And try to avoid any unnecessary physical contact, touching, hugging, um, getting too close if you, if you don't have to. You know, you know, we're humans, we wanna to touch, we wanna to be touched, but right now we need to be very careful. To, we can use our body language, we can talk to people, we just have to make sure we keep our distance right now. Okay, so the age shift is over, she's gonna go home. Uh, and she's going to take the apron off and she's going to put it into the hamper in the room as well as the hand towel in the bathroom. She's going to wash her hands for 20 seconds. If she had gloves on, those were going to come off. Um, the gloves can come off. Uh, the apron comes off. And she's going to leave the mask until she actually leaves the house because there's a garbage can now you put near the front door. And that's where she's going to dispose of it. Make sure if you put a basket there that it's nothing that they have to lift a lid. If it could be a little one with a foot pedal, you can have it open and put a little plastic bag in there and then throw the things in there and um, throw away the bag. Okay. Um, and when the person leaves, the aide leaves and you lock the door with the sign on the door for the next person, you're going to clean up after the aide a little bit. Think about mom stuff being on the shelving. You have less knobs, you have less handles to touch, but think about the bathroom. You know, if you keep a pair of like rubber gloves, you know, these bathroom gloves, you don't have to go through expensive surgical gloves. Keep these in the bathroom, keep a bucket in the bathroom, keep a sponge that's designated for the sink. You can get some sprays such as these Lysol sprays or wipes or um, any of those EPA uh, protected items that are out there and they can be used to clean up that space, the sink faucets, the sink around there and let it all air dry. Uh, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to clean the bed rails. If she has a nebulizer, you're going to wipe it off. Think about where that aid was in the room, overnight table, um, doorknobs, closets, bathroom counter, etc. cetera, any, anything like that. So for review, there's a couple signs you're going to have. You're going to have the sign for the door. You're going to have the hand washing sign at all washing stations. I'm going to give you a handout of this lecture that I just gave you so that you can read it over and the aides can actually put a staple in it and bring it to them to each home so they really understand. If you want more information, you can go on CDC. There's also a CDC guideline that I will put up, give to you if you'd like. It's called steps to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. It's in English, it comes in Spanish, it comes in all languages. You can actually download this anywhere in the world for your family member who doesn't speak English or the aide and stick it in the bathrooms and in the bedroom. Right now, that's what we're supposed to all be doing. And I'll be posting all this on facebook.com caregiver success, all these handouts for you by tomorrow. So for my birthday present today, this is what I ask of you. First, I want all of us to have another birthday. And I want us to all be safe, and I know I want us to be well. And I would love it if you would go to my YouTube channel, Caregiver Success, and subscribe, or find one person who you know needs this information so that they can be keeping watch on things that I'm gonna do on this YouTube channel to help us all stay safe and healthy in our homes while we're quarantined all over America, and for that matter, all over the world. Stay safe. Remember to work together as we live apart right now or stay apart. Definitely keep the faith. And it's from Nancy, the nurse practitioner. Take care for now.